Hey friends, my name is Kyle Rossell and I hope you were doing so well and I hope you're well caffeinated. If you're not, go brew yourself a nice hot coffee, pull up a beanbag chair because today we're not talking about the GameCube, we're talking about the San Remo Cube. And this has gotta be one of the most talked about espresso machines likely of 2021. So today I wanna to talk about it. I wanna talk about it with you and share my thoughts of the San Remo Cube thus far. I wanna give you an overview of some of the specs and what separates this from other machines on the market. Let's talk about some pros, some cons. I wanna brew some coffee with this machine with you and talk about how this brews coffee and how good that coffee tastes. And at the end of this video, I wanna talk about who this machine is for. Is this for you? Is this not for you? And I also wanna share some details on some upgrades and updates they're gonna be making to this machine in the months to come before this actually goes public, which I need to give some disclaimer here, and that's that this machine is a pre-production unit. Okay, this isn't the full production unit, but the fact that I do have this accessible to me to make a video for you says a lot about how far along they are on the process. Now, I don't have a date for you today, but I've been told this isn't too, too far away. Now, I also wanna say San Remo did send me this machine to make this video, but also to test it out, to give back some feedback for them. So, throughout this video, if you find any feedback that would be helpful for San Remo, kindly, coffee Karens out there, write them down in the comments below and let me know how San Remo can update this machine before it goes public. And also, they don't see this video before you do, and there was no money exchanged in the process of any of this. So let's dive into this. I've got so many thoughts on the cube, and I'm excited to share that with you. But before we get into it, I want to give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is Stan Art Magazine. Now, if you've been hanging around this channel for any period of time, you know that I love Standard. Right now, I'm enjoying an amazing article by Tom Hopkinson, and that is the murky origins of the espresso machine. It's reads like this that I normally wouldn't find anywhere else in the world that just really draw my attention, and I just prefer reading a paper read every single morning with my coffee than scrolling endlessly on Instagram. If you're with me on that, you wanna deepen your knowledge of specialty coffee and wanna enjoy coffee because this issue came with Say, a roast are from Brooklyn, New York, and they gave me a washed Ethiopian. <sighs> they get me. If you're interested in subscribing for Stand Art Magazine, use the link in the description or go to standartmag.com forward slash Kyle. You'll get free shipping internationally and you'll get one of these samples of Say if you get this issue. Thank you, Stand Art Magazine, for sponsoring this video. So the cube, let's talk about its specs. Real quick, it's got a 1.9 liter heat exchanger boiler that is stainless steel. Now, yes, it is a heat exchanger machine and we're gonna come back to this later on because I know you've got thoughts on that. It uses AISI 316 stainless steel, high grade, high quality stainless steel that is meant to last a long time. It uses a 1.8 liter internal water tank, which I've got thoughts on, the E61 thermosiphon group, which is fairly common on many home espresso machines with its mechanical pre-infusion. Also got thoughts on that, we'll come back to that. It's also got an energy saving system that puts the machine in an eco mode or a standby mode to save some power if you're not using it for a few hours. And it's got a Wi-Fi connection with a web app. Love this, and we'll talk about all about this, but this does connect to your home Wi-Fi and enables you to use your phone or a tablet to connect to the espresso machine to control it from a distance. And it also comes with a complete set of accessories for a great user experience, including your normal portafilter with a double spout, your bottomless portafilter, a tamper, and everything you need to get started with espresso. Now, if you get this model that I have right here, this is the Cube R, and it has everything the vibration model does, except it has a rotary pump and it's got a 54 liter an hour rotary pump and that's absolutely incredible. It's a volumetric rotary pump and it also has the ability to plumb this machine in directly if you want to go that route. Me, I personally never do that. I use a product called Third Wave Water in all my espresso machines, but I do know that a lot of people love that option. So now you might be saying, oh, that's a, that's a nice looking machine you got there, Kyle. I like the, I like the look of that cube. How much is one of those gonna cost me? Stick around because I've got some information on that, both Canadian and USD, but first I wanna talk about pros and cons. So let's talk about the pros of this machine. It's gotta start with the workmanship. This has gotta be one of the best, well-built E61 machines that I've probably ever used. And I've used many machines. Now I'm not biased in saying this, I can say whatever I want, and I will, but this machine is really well-built and I've gotta give it to San Remo. But let's talk about aesthetics first, because I think this is really where the cube sets itself apart from the market. Colors and matte black options and things that are more customizable are highly desired. 
And I think the cube will really set itself apart in a market where everything looks very bland. And I am an E61 owner. I've owned many E61 machines over the years, but it seems like every machine that's been coming out over the years has looked very similar. So huge props for the aesthetics of the cube, but that is subjective and you might not agree. So let me know down in the comments below if you like the looks of the cube. You've got to give huge props to things like the lines it uses for both its hot water and steam knobs. And everything just looks very modern and new. You've got a digital screen up here with beautiful gauges and even the logo where it says cube, it just looks modern and hip. And I haven't been able to say that about an espresso machine that has an E61 group head probably ever. And so a huge props to San Remo for making one of the best looking, well-built espresso machines in a long time. But you pay for that. Again, we'll come back to that. I also love how this has vibration pump and rotary options. That's not something you see on every espresso machine. And if you don't need a rotary pump, you can save some money. Huge props for that. And the ability to have a vibration pump enables you to have a different ramp of pressure for the pump. This rotary pump brews right to its full pressure. And while it does give you a mechanical pre-infusion, it hits that nine bars pretty quickly. A vibration pump will allow you to ramp pressure. Huge props for the nice feet. I mean, nice feet on any espresso machine deserve a huge shout out because this one has fantastic feet. And I've got to say, I love the matte black for the idea that it hides all my coffee splatters. If you've owned an espresso machine that uses stainless steel finish, especially a polished one, you know how much of a pain it can be to keep clean. And after using this machine for three weeks, I think I cleaned it maybe once. And I think that was just to film this video. So it's pretty great. I do love that, huge props for that. Another huge pro is that phone connectivity. I love being able to adjust a schedule for when my machine turns on and off every morning, which you can do from an app from your phone. Again, talking about where we are in 2021, we are in a connected world. Being able to control your device with your phone is incredibly desirable. This is something you've seen on our Marzocco machines over the years, and I accept this with open arms for a machine like the Cube. It enables me to not only program when I want the machine to go into standby mode, but I can actually turn the machine on manually from standby mode to the on position as long as the machine is in standby from my phone anywhere. Because this doesn't connect to your phone by Bluetooth, it connects to your home Wi-Fi, which enables you to use your app anywhere, not just when you're at home. Also, you've got a counter. You've got things like how many shots I brewed today, how many shots I brewed this week, and how many shots I brewed this month and year, and then the total shots overall, which could be great for resale value, but also just keeping keeping an eye on how much caffeine you're drinking. It has alerts for when you might need some maintenance done on the machine, which I think is great. And it's also got a feature called Cube Connect, which I'm not able to use on my app yet, but I'm assuming that's gonna be some kind of social network for this machine. We'll see what that becomes. Before we go to the next one, if you haven't yet hit that like button, please do. Likes are down this month, and it really changes the algorithm. YouTube's crazy about that stuff. Thank you. But let's talk about some of the cons because this is where the conversation gets very, very juicy. And I think we got to start with, well, let's start with the least important things and that would probably be the water tank. Now this is a 1.8 liter water tank and while that might seem decent, I find it to be fairly small for its 1.9 liter brew boiler. Now this is not super uncommon with espresso machines, but I find this one is very frustrating because not only is it small, but it doesn't give you a warning when you're low. And so my wife and I have used this many times and wasted a lot of coffee because in the middle of a shot, we run out of water. Now they advertise this machine also has mechanical pre-infusion. And I need to talk about this because after talking to a few people about this, including some coffee experts in the industry, I don't believe this has true mechanical pre-infusion. Hey friends, editor Kyle here. And I wanna quickly explain my thoughts on pre-infusion on the cube a little bit better because I don't feel like I communicated it well. This does have a mechanical pre-infusion or that's what they call it. And this is similar to what you'd find on the Pro 700 or the ECM Synchronica, other machines that are also E61 devices. What the Cube in San Remo has designed is allowing you to pull up the lever and open up the cam system to allow the water to flow through from the line using the steam pressure from the boiler without activating the pump. If I do this, you can see the water will start to drip that is in the line pushed through by the steam pressure of the boiler itself. The reason I wouldn't classify this as true pre-infusion, unless this is plumbed in, there is no pressure being applied to the puck. And that's a huge issue for a few reasons. One of them being Scott Rayo says, without consistent pressure and pre-infusion, that allows for more opportunities for channeling when that full pressure is applied. More so than this, I will never be able to get drips of coffee into my cup from just pre-infusion. Now that's not necessarily an issue, but it says to me that the whole cup is not saturated itself. 
and it just simply isn't. It's a pre-wetting, something you find similar on other machines. If you plumb this in with the rotary pump, 100% that line pressure from the plumbing in will actually push that water through at the PSI that your water line is set to. So it's a little bit different and that's a whole nother video, but this doesn't have true pre-infusion without plumbing it in. Now, when it comes to some other machines like the Mara X or even the Lily Bianca, they actually have mechanical pre-infusion built into the E61 group head. And the way that they accomplish this is they actually have a piston system that allows some of the water to go into the back end of the, the group head here and allows some of the pressure to be diverted from the group head to that back end. And so you have to fill up that group head with water essentially to be able to get full pressure. And so the Bianca will take six to eight seconds to pre-infuse and the, the Leap Mara X will take 11 seconds to pre-infuse and you do not have to pull up the lever halfway. If you give the pump the full pressure, it will take that time. Hopefully that makes sense. Still nice to be able to pre-wet your coffee bed and not have to slam it with nine bars of pressure right away but not exactly pre-infusion or flow profiling like you'd find on other machines. Now, I love how this has the temperature of the heat exchanger displayed on the front of the machine. This might be limited just to the R model. In fact, I believe it is. Regardless, I don't love how it only shows the heat exchanger temperature and not the brew temperature that'll be experienced coming through the group head. Something like the Profitec Pro 500 is another heat exchanger machine that's almost half the price and has very similar specs except for some of its features, but it actually translates that temperature from steam pressure to what the brew temperature would be. Now, the temperature in the boiler is exactly what's showing up here, but as the heat exchanger system brings it to the group head, it's cooled down to a lower temperature because you wouldn't want to brew at 251 degrees. That would be absolutely absurd. I'd love to see that implied maybe in a future update of this machine. Let me know down in the comments below if you agree. So then we've got to talk about one of the biggest cons, which I would say is probably its price. Now, San Remo has not made a home espresso machine before, and they have been making espresso machines for the cafe for years, and they're some of the best in the industry for making cafe machines. They're absolutely beautiful. They have features galore, and like I've said, they're built like tanks. I love the innovation they've brought. I love the aesthetics they've brought, but at $4,900 Canadian or $3,400 American, give or take, that's fairly expensive to compare you can get a Bianca, which is a dual boiler express machine with flow profiling and many of the same features except for that phone connectivity, maybe slightly less build quality for around $3,000, give or take. And that really sets up a big debate on how much that connectivity and branding is important to you. For some people, it will be, but that comes down to you. And I'm not gonna tell you what to buy, nor do I feel I should. So I would love to know down in the comments below, would you buy a machine like the Cube? Do you think that it's in your price bracket? Are the aesthetics worth it to you? Is that phone connectivity worth it to you? Are some of the features that this machine have worth it to you? Or would you prefer to spend your money elsewhere on a machine like a Profitec or an ECM, a Rocket? And if you're wondering why they'd put a heat exchanger, San Remo has become public saying they believe the E61 originally was designed for the heat exchanger system, which is true. And that for that reason, in testing, they believe the best results were from a heat exchanger. Now, I'm not gonna make any comments on that, but I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Again, Coffee Karens, kindly, down in the comments below. Now I'm gonna share some future updates they're planning to release with this machine with the full production model. But before we get to that, let's brew some coffee. I mean, what can I say? The espresso is good. It is everything you want out of an espresso machine. My question more is for this price, could I get more for my money? And is this machine worth it to you? That's a whole nother question. And again, I'd love to know down in the comments below. But before you go, I wanna give you some of the updates that San Remo plans to update with this machine before it launches its full production model. Now, one of the things that this machine doesn't have right now that I didn't talk about was a cool touch steam one. And the reason I didn't talk about it is because that they plan to address that in the full production model. They also plan to adjust the steam pressure. And this was gonna be something that I wanted to put in my cons list, but it's really not something that I can talk about because they plan to adjust and pivot in their full production model. That being said, my experience with the steam pressure on this machine was less than ideal. 
I mean, maybe it's because I'm coming from a machine with two bars of steam pressure like the Bianca, but even cranking this thing up to 130 degrees Celsius on its steam temperature, it just didn't feel like it had the oomph that even some old heat exchangers that I had did. And you do see this because the temperature that's coming out of the group head isn't overheated. You don't have to flush this between brews. That PID does work very well. Even with the Mara X that I've reviewed, you can watch that right up here. It had the adjustability to be able to swap between brew priority and steam priority. So if you're watching the San Remo, if you can add that switch to be able to swap between brew priority and steam priority, I think it would be a great option for a machine like this or just add another boiler. A few more things they're adding. They're adding more accessibility to the pump adjustment system, which is always welcomed. The more accessibility we have, the better. And they're also shortening this brew lever, which all for that, I think aesthetically that'll look great. And they're adding a quick start guide. Those are things that were shared with me and I would love to know what else they should add down in the comments below. Before you go, if you like this video at all, you found it at all entertaining or informative, the best thing you can do to support this channel is dropping a like down below. It really changes the game for YouTube videos and subscribe if you haven't already for more coffee videos and more videos like this one. If you're not yet following me on Instagram, be sure to do that. That's where I'm posting almost daily and you can see behind the scenes and making videos like this one and just my life outside of YouTube. And we will see you guys all in the next video. Continue to brew great coffee. Continue to brew at home. Peace. We'll see you guys all in the next one. Bye.